Okay, so today's big idea, topic of the day, LinkedIn, the professional social network. Well, that's sort of a misnomer nowadays. Every, every network can be used as a professional network nowadays. But this one came out early on, at least 10 years ago. I think it's from around 2003 or four or so. Uh, in the beginning, all the social networks were these fun, personal social networks where I'm gonna share what I had for breakfast or I'm gonna share a funny cat picture and so forth. And so LinkedIn came out, okay, we're gonna do our social network for professionals. We're gonna connect together to try to uh, land a job, make connections with people to network and so forth. So we're the professional social network. But then eventually all the networks got the ability to be used professionally. So it's now that moniker doesn't even apply as much anymore. So nowadays all social networks can be used for professional. Well, if that's the case, purposes, if that's the case, the professional social network is their USP. Anyone remember what USP stands for? I think I heard someone say unique selling proposition. So USP, unique selling proposition. So their unique selling proposition is not unique anymore. In the beginning, you would get on LinkedIn because that was where you were connecting professionally. You weren't sharing what you had for breakfast. You weren't sharing pictures of your kids. You were sharing things that would help you get a job or get connected with someone in your industry and such. Well, you can do that on Facebook now and, and Pinterest to a degree and Twitter and all of that so that it doesn't have its uniqueness. Therefore, LinkedIn has to continue to evolve and it has more features. They now have many more features to keep their USP. They have, um, what's their official name at the moment? Uh, LinkedIn Premier or LinkedIn Pro? We'll see it in a moment. LinkedIn, I think it's Premier. The pay service to unlock more features. They have linked in learning their training. System. They have slide share, the presentation sharing network, they have their uh, job center, post find jobs. So it's not just the classic social network in terms of posting something, sharing something, replying and such, which you do on all the networks. It has these other extra features. Yes. So they also have the usual social network accessories, which are posting, replying, Liking, resharing, following. Okay, uses for or of Facebook. Uh, I'm not saying, these that I'm about to list, I'm not saying you have to do all of these, but these are possibilities of how you can use them. So I'll say possible uses. 
an online resume. A networking site. A job hunting site. A school where you can update your skills. We'll do those for the moment. So a resume, um, you put there out uh, your resume like a classic one about your educational experience, your previous work experience, all of that. So it's just an online resume. We'll see how that one works in a moment when we go to the network. So there's that possibility. We've got also a way to network. And this I mean networking in the classic sense of um, networking in the real world. Has anyone ever gone to networking or mixers in the real world about professional topics? So I've gone to a few like um, you know, San Diego Business Association, you know, San Diego Small Small Business Association, or the you know the Chamber of Commerce mixers and such, where you go and, and you talk to people in a professional setting, get a few free drinks and stuff, and then uh, make contacts and pass out business cards and maybe make deals at that moment. Well, that's what I mean here by by networking. So, like a real world business association mixer that sort of thing online resume well that's kind of obvious uh, show your education job experience job hunting well you know it's the classifieds look for a job or perhaps post a job maybe I need to hire people for my business I can use LinkedIn to find people and of course it's better than a, than the classic um, classifieds because it's digital because I can do what we learned about in the other networks in terms of targeting demographics I can uh, put my ad out for the people I'm trying to hire and target it specifically to people that are, are, are of a certain location, um, skill level, uh, experience, and so forth. Instead of putting that ad out on the paper where everyone will see it and I'll get lots of bad candidates, I can set it up in LinkedIn. In LinkedIn, I can set it up that it'll really target those that uh, I, I will have a better chance of, of uh, hiring. And this is the most, yes. Um, years ago, my father was selling a motel and he put an ad in the classifieds mm -hmm. and got nothing. And so I put it on uh, one of the business, I can't remember the name of it right now, but a business a real estate mm -hmm. website and he sold it. Mm -hmm. So it was like foolish for him to do the classifieds. He was 80 something years old, so he didn't know better. And it was, if you're going to sell a business, it was stupid not to put it on that side. Mm. Right? So is, that, is there anything like that if you're looking for work that you are foolish not to be on LinkedIn? <laughs> well, this is the thing, I, unfortunately, again, about the USP, the uniqueness of it at a certain point, that was the go-to place. Now there's so many places for you to put your job listing at to try to get hired or to get hired. So LinkedIn is just one of them. What's foolish is not to try a few of them and see which one works, right? I, I, I cast a net and see what I get. So LinkedIn would be one of them. Uh, let me just kind of briefly mention a few others here, job-related sites. We have, of course, LinkedIn. Uh, but we have also one called glassdoor.com. We have Zip Recruiter. Dot com. Um, yeah, that's another classic one there, monster.com. And what was the other one you said? Indeed. Oh, yeah, indeed.com. 
So there's so many of them out there. You can even go to places such as Behance.com uh, and uh, Dribble. I forget how many Bs are on that one. I think three Bs or two Bs, something like that. They have a funny name. But these are just a variety of job hunting sorts of sites. Now, some of them are a little bit more focused on a certain niche. These two right here at the end are a little bit more focused like on getting a web design job or a graphic design job and stuff like that. I think indeed to some degree it's also a tech job. Uh, so this is, this is the point about, it, let's say in the old days, I would put it in the classifieds in one newspaper. Well, there's three newspapers in the city. I would want to put it my job listing in the classifieds of all those three papers. So in the digital world, I have all of these possible classified sites, so I, it would be silly not to try all of them to see what, what I get out of it. So um, that's what I would say at the minimum to be on, on one of them. That's, that's one of the big ones. And then go off to some of these other ones. And there's even local ones, very, very hyper-local, like a San Diego-only job site. I don't know which one that would be. I'd have to look it up. But a lot of times on these networks you can also target yourself. I may be in San Diego but I'm trying to get a job in Sacramento. I can target myself to be found by potential employers in Sacramento in these networks. I don't have to have to put the ad in the Sacramento B as opposed to the Union Tribune. So you have the reach of social media a lot further than the old than the old classic ways. Okay, so this one about a school. This one's this one's really cool. Um, so, aka Lynda.com. Has anyone has anyone heard of Lynda.com before? If you haven't, Lynda.com is a, an online training website that's been around probably like uh, at least fifteen years nowadays, probably even longer. And what it is, it's online professional online training videos and courses. training courses. So at your own pace, you enroll in the how to use Photoshop beginner course. And then at your own pace, you watch the videos, you do lessons and homework, you get graded on it, you then complete the class satisfactorily, and you get certificates, real certificates that then go on your resume in LinkedIn. And then you have the skills of now I have beginning Photoshop skills. Then I go off into the next level of Photoshop and I learn more. Now, depending on the service, it may be free or not. So I'm mentioning all of these things. The networking aspect of it, the job hunting aspect, the education aspect. I'm mentioning all of these aspects of it. Um, you know, we want to hold our horses because some of them may be completely free and some of them may be a paid thing. So we'll see which are paid and which are not. But what we're seeing is that LinkedIn then offers a lot of things. We're going to explore them all as much time as we have. So we'll look at the resume one first. That's the easiest one to wrap our heads around. Let me show you an example. You can do this as well if you'd like. Go to your web browser and go to the address http colon slash slash linkedin dot com slash in slash Victor Campos. So we can look at my LinkedIn profile and also when I do these classes, I always tell people, don't be offended if I don't accept a connection from you, a student. Because the main thing that I will say, especially for LinkedIn, I, I will, I will, oh, actually, uh, is it going to even let you look at it? Sometimes they let you look at it without signing in. Is it going to let us look at it? Maybe not. OK, well, if it doesn't let you look at it right away, just wait a moment. They, they change this sometimes. So if you don't see my resume here, just hold on a moment. What I was about to say was, um, I'm going to say, and I'm going to give you full permission, use LinkedIn selfishly. 
not selflessly, selfishly. Use LinkedIn selfishly. Con meaning, connect with people that will benefit you. Um, and again, n not to be mean about it or anything like that, but I get people in all of these classes wanting to connect with me. Every semester they find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever, and especially something where LinkedIn where you have to approve the connection, uh, I almost never approve it, and not because you're a bad person. It's because I need to use LinkedIn, you need to use LinkedIn to connect with people that will benefit you. Um, if I connect with that person, that person could help me get this job. Or if I connect with that person, that person can connect me with this other person that can help me with this nonprofit organization. Or if I connect with this person, I'll get some great knowledge out of an industry. Don't connect with people here like your old high school sweetheart or your second cousin twice removed because you're related somehow. No, you want to connect here with people that are going to benefit you for what your ultimate purpose of using any of the social media is. My ultimate goal for using LinkedIn, perhaps, you know, is to sell more cupcakes. I've got Victor's Bakery. I'm in the business of selling cupcakes. How can I use LinkedIn to sell more cupcakes? Maybe I can connect with a local celebrity food blogger or chef or something. And if I connect with them on LinkedIn, I have like a little bit of an in on the industry about food reviewing or something. And that way I can maybe grease the wheels and get a re great review out of my my business so how can you use any of these social networks to benefit you but especially LinkedIn because people are always going to ask you would you like to connect on LinkedIn let's connect on LinkedIn please let's connect on LinkedIn and again I've already gotten several from uh, people in the class and I and I deny most of them because you want to use it selfishly so before agreeing to a connection check their profile so follow the link to their account and see who or what they're about and then determine how it would benefit you to connect because one of the big differences in using LinkedIn versus the other social networks, it's a lot more people to people. LinkedIn is more people to people, one to one, as opposed to something like Facebook or Twitter, or Pinterest, etc. Those are often business to people and one to many. One to one is me, Victor, is going to connect with Janet on LinkedIn one-to-one. -one. We both have approved the connection. Therefore, we will see each other's content. If she follows me, I follow her. I see what she posts regarding her business. She sees what I post regarding my business. It's one-to-one. -one. We've connected that way. These other networks, I can get someone following me on Twitter. I don't have to follow them back. I can have someone like my page or follow my page on Facebook. I don't have to like theirs back. I can get someone following me on Pinterest. I don't have to follow them back. So it's one to many. Many people may be connecting to me, the one. But LinkedIn is much more about one to one. So then always think in terms of how can this connection benefit me or my business? Most of the social media, you're still going to think about it like that, but LinkedIn is a little bit more obvious because it's a person creating an account, showing off their resume, job skills, what they offer, and therefore the connection is more personable, personal that way. So I, I wanted to show an example of what a LinkedIn resume showed. Did any was anyone able to see it, or did it then block you and say you had to sign in? You did see it. Okay, maybe a few people saw it. Good. If you didn't, um, I don't know. I, I can't show it here, but I don't want to. I don't want to sign into it yet. Uh, but 
if you're able to see it, my resume is there. And it's the standard sort of thing in that it has my education, my job experience. It has other extra things too, like uh, languages spoken or programming languages spoken or uh, awards and experiences. There's even you know, a spot to put in patents that you might have earned and such, or degrees. And we'll look at that, how that looks in a moment. But again, I'm showing you my address. Most likely I won't approve you if you try to connect with me. And again, don't take it bad. I'm just trying to uh, I tell you early on that uh, I connect with people that will benefit me or my company. Now, if this were a class that were a graded class, as I've said, I teach classes here in Southwestern College as well. And at Southwestern College, the classes I teach there are all for grades and credits and units and such. These classes up here at North City, they're all free no grades and such. So especially when I'm teaching classes over there for social media, I, I almost never connect with students because that's a conflict of interest. Because like, why did I get a B in the class? I thought we were friends on LinkedIn. I thought we were friends on Facebook. So I, I don't do it. Think about that also for yourself. Is it going to benefit you in the real world also to be friends, quote unquote, in the digital world? And it's perfectly okay not to connect and it's perfectly okay to be more judicious in your connections. Facebook is more of the place where, let me connect with this old high school friend. Is it going to really benefit you to have that connection in LinkedIn? Sometimes people get caught up in that number, followers or connections. I've got 100 connections on LinkedIn, and you've only got 12. Well, those 12 connections are more beneficial to me because I know who they are, and I know how they benefit me. Those 100 that you have, they're just numbers. Are they even active on LinkedIn? Are they even helping you on LinkedIn? So that number is irrelevant on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is sort of the network where I would say it doesn't matter your follower number. It's not about quantity, it's about quality. Whereas the other networks, to some degree, it is also about quantity of networks. Of connections, I mean. Yes? So, you know, if you can clear out um, all the you know, third and fourth people contacts that you claim me on LinkedIn because of my experience and I uh, wouldn't be able to, and it'd be a liability for me to tell you point blank yes or no on that. Um, but based on what I've said so far, you can probably determine what I would suggest. Uh, but if they don't benefit you, they don't benefit you. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so not even not even a virtual one on Skype, so it might not be useful. <clears throat> so in most networks, uh, quantity, quantity and quality matter, but um, linked in quality matters most. On Twitter, I've got five hundred connections. Or followers, but like I said, only one percent are going to really, really care. So if I one percent of five hundred, five real quality results. LinkedIn, it's not going to benefit me to have five hundred connections. Uh, I would rather have five or seven or twelve real connections with people that are active and using it the network the best way and um, really serious about it. So if I'm Qualcomm, mm -hmm. do I, so then I don't have followers, I have people that are linked to me. So if I want to go, if I, if, if I want to look for a job at, at Qualcomm, do I have to link to them to see what's available or do I go to their website? I mean, I don't, this is the this is the confusing part also for LinkedIn because LinkedIn can be used as a person or a company. So this is where you then have to determine which is going to be more valuable for you. Am I going to try to connect to the person in HR at Qualcomm that can help me get the job or am I going to connect to the main company account on LinkedIn which might not because the main company is just going to be posting stuff about look at the look at our latest technology here's our latest white paper here's our next conference it's most likely going to be the person in the HR department that's going to do the actual hiring and such so that's the person I want to connect with 
you often can connect with the company and it will show you who the employees are. And then that way you can do a little bit of detective work and then find out who is the person that will get you hired in the company and connect with them. But, but does the company accept my, <coughs> my connection and, and then am I able to post on their feed? A business page is a special case. Okay. It's not as full featured as a person. This is kind of the opposite of the other networks, where the other networks let, let a business do everything that a person does, posting, sharing, and all of that. A business page on LinkedIn is actually pretty limited compared to a person. So no, you, you, you could, I suppose, follow the company's business page and comment on their business, on their postings and stuff like that. But it's not really set up that way. It's still more about person to person. So when, when we actually do it, it might make more sense. But the point, again, is you are going to be going toward making the connection to the person related to a business, not exactly making the connection to the business. Because someone ultimately is, is going to do the hiring, not the business, but the person in the business. So you connect to the person. So yes. there's a person at Qualcomm HR that they consider and hire John over there? Would they look at his LinkedIn? Yes, it's becoming so much more common nowadays to the horror of some and to the delight of others that that HR people now are looking at people's social networks. So if I have these social networks where I'm showing myself partying in Cancun all the time um, and I'm trying to get hired and people can easily look me up, Victor Campos Twitter, and they find my account where I'm being a party person, you know, that could be a violation of privacy. That could be a violation of HR rules, but it's the it's the sort of gray area that we're in in all of this about like the burden of proof about I didn't get hired because you saw my picture of me doing a keg, keg stand. Like how are you going to prove that? So if we have a profile where we're putting our best foot forward here, we have a LinkedIn account or we have Twitter accounts or whatever that's always putting our best foot forward then that's even better for us when these HR people inevitably take a peek at us without us looking. So always try to put the best content and your best foot forward on these networks. Try, at least. With so many HR people now also browsing, or AKA spying, on us on social media make sure you set your privacy settings properly online and there 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 is of course a distinction personal versus private personal versus business i shouldn't be judged on what i'm doing in my personal life in my business life if everything is you know legal or whatever but i shouldn't be judged that um, you know, I, I, I go to Cancun every weekend in, in my business as a lawyer. You know, I, I, I work uh, Monday through Friday. I'm, I'm an upstanding lawyer, but then when I go on the weekends and I, I cut loose, that shouldn't affect things. But it definitely happens all the time. It, it, you probably have heard of things like people getting fired for what they tweeted. Well, that was on my own personal tweet. And yeah, I said a really racist thing, but why am I getting fired? You know, that sort of thing. So. That's the uh, HR company handbook that, is a, that says what are fireable offenses and what are unhireable offenses. So that that's, um, varies by company, by organization and such. I remember uh, reading a few years ago, there was some employee of some company, I don't remember the details, but the big idea is that uh, this lady was uh, traveling uh, on a plane uh, to uh, South Africa or something and she was on Twitter and she started to say some racist things about Africa by the time she landed on the plane she was fired because you know that stuff's public and then it goes viral and then you get called out and the company doesn't want to be associated with employees that tarnish their image so before all of this social media if I was writing inflammatory things opinions in the in the local newspaper that could be grounds for dismissal at, a, at my company 
I could try to challenge it in HR or in the courts and all of that, but then you get into the courts and all of that. So nowadays, because it's so immediate, uh, things happen. You know, Roseanne got fired from her show that very day. So um, all of this is completely public and um, immediate. So think about that. And think about setting your things to private, especially for personal stuff, just in case, perhaps. So uh, we'll take our first break in one moment, but let's do this before you take the break. Uh, let's go to LinkedIn.com. <coughs> LinkedIn.com. And either sign in if you already have an account, <coughs> or take a moment to create an account, or if you don't want to do it in the class here, that's fine. You can do it at home. You can watch the video and do it at home. But either sign in, sign up, then take a break. It's about 10.50. We'll take a break until 11. When we come back, we'll be logged into an account, and then I'll show you how LinkedIn works and best practices and so forth. So we'll take a break until 11.